Greetings and welcome to New Cycle. I'm Catherine of Sky, and a huge thanks to Didalic Entertainment for sponsoring six episodes of this game. I am really excited to play because I've been practicing a lot and uh, it's got some really, really cool qualities which I think you're going to like in this kind of a game. So this is like a survival city builder, but we are not dealing with zombies, thank goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired of zombies. <laughs> Instead, we are trying to help these people who are kind of have been the victims of a very massive solar event uh, and they're trying to rebuild society and all that kind of stuff and we have things like migrant people coming in we've got traders we've got the ability to explore the world map and get resources outside of our colony and stuff like that and I think you're really gonna enjoy this so um, uh, do check out my uh, my link in the description below. Clicking on that link will let the publisher know that I, you found out about the game from me and uh, hopefully that I'm doing a good job. So um, do check it out on Steam. And um, so let's start a new game and I'll tell you about all the options and all that kind of stuff. So um, we have different options here. We have a sandbox. Um, which is, you know, a peaceful mode without any outside threats or changes. Um, we have the campaign, which is what we're going to play because we have six episodes. Oh, this is so exciting. And, um, and then there are two uh, scenarios. Uh, I don't think we can play this one, but we could play this one if we wanted to. But we're going to go ahead and play the campaign mode. The story mode presenting all the mechanics and tribulations that can be experienced in the dynamic universe of New Cycle. And this will also give you achievements. So let's select this one. Now they recommend to start on Meadow initially because uh, it's uh, the, well, <laughs> it gives you the most advantage, I guess. Uh, home to open stretches of land and fertile soil, this biome transitions relatively smoothly between seasons. Though not overly challenging in terms of food and water, underground resources are somewhat scarce. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you do get 40 morale at the start of spring. That's quite important, actually. The tundra has less meat. Uh, which I think would be okay as well. This biome provides both the benefits and difficulties of geographical isolation, meaning less space for activities such as hunting and mining, but better access to oceanic resources. Yeah, that's uh, things like fish and stuff. Uh, possibly energy as well, because um, our main energy source, at least in the beginning of the game, is going to be wind mines. So um, I noticed that uh, the coastal areas of the meadow map, and I don't know if there's a procedurally generated or not, um, but yeah, the, there's a lot of wind coming from the ocean side. Then there's the step, um, and that one doesn't seem to have any... Uh, pluses or minuses, but I think what we and then of course there's a mountain which is not playable at the moment Keep in mind that this game is in early access So some of the features are limited until you know they get uh, developed and released So I think we're gonna play meadow. Let's go with that one Okay, and here we are All right a message from the community Ah, Here's another one of these wonderful illustrations uh, a message from the community. You are now the governor of this little community. It's been nearly half a century since the first solar flare. In the initial moments of the catastrophe, we lost our entire technological infrastructure, our means of global sourcing, and almost everything that we can share as a civilization. The following years were humanity's darkest, having to wrestle with constant impossibility and despair. From battles fought with sticks and stones to nuclear wars, we ended up destroying ourselves and what little the sun had left for us. And civilization fell. Everyone here was born into this new world, and you have to be their leader. Our current flimsy shelter can't carry us far. We must rebuild everything from scratch with efforts of those who remain so we can establish a sustainable way of life. We need to rediscover our lost knowledge and explore our surroundings to create new possibilities. Most importantly, beyond mere surviving, we have to find a way of securing our next generation by whose time the world may not be habitable anymore. We don't know how we can preserve life as we know it, but we can at least help build something that we may ho call home. All right, I'm going to go without the tutorial because I don't really need it. Um, we'll go ahead and put this on slow speed right now. And let's take a look at our map here. 
Okay, so we have uh, this looks interesting. I think, I'm not sure if it's the same map or not. I know that there's a lighthouse structure. There was on when I played, I, it might be the same map actually uh, as when I practiced. Yeah, this mountain looks very similar as well. Um, yeah, anyway, so we have a lot of resources here in terms of like trees and stuff. So the first thing we want to start doing, um, and it kind of helps you out by giving you, uh, you know, your basic options of what we have here. So we want to start off with a field camp so we can collect stones and logs. Those are important. So what we can do is if you put the camp right around like here where you have all three resources, this is iron, which we can't use yet. We have stone here and logs there as in trees. We can place that there and then we can start to build a road. So here is, we'll, we'll build, actually we can't, <laughs> we can't build a road yet because we don't have any stone. Whoops. Uh, there we go. Let's pause, let's unpause. We'll, um, actually, let's go a little bit slower so you can see the people. They are very cute. They, they carry things and carts and boxes and stuff. The graphics are really beautiful. I think they're kind of, um, I, I, I approve of these graphics. They're very, like, it looks, you know, kind of put together by survivors and ramshackle a bit. But yet there's this kind of warmth to it, the, the warmth to the entire color palette, which is very different from a lot of this kind of, this sort of genre of game, the survivor city builder, where it's very kind of dark and nasty and gross and like zombies and, you know, it's not great. Um, but this feels very warm and pleasant to, uh, to look at for, for long periods of time. And look at the trees, they're like really fuzzy. It's kind of neat. <laughs> These pine trees, spruce trees, I guess. I don't know, whatever they are, they're conifers, they're great. Okay, so that's happening. So let's let that happen. Now we also have a gathering camp, which we really need to set up first of all. Now we don't have the technology to catch fish or meat, but we do have mushrooms. And I suggest you get mushrooms. So let's let's put this here. We can actually keep this. This can cover all four of these, and that's fine. Um, we also want to set up another gathering camp for more mushrooms, if we can find them. There's some here. It's not a lot, but it's something at least. And that might be enough. Field camp. No, no. Sorry, gathering camp. Any mushrooms here? Well, there's some here. Let's go ahead and build one here as well. All right, uh, okay, so then we're going to get this stuff going. So here is our wood camp. So the way this works is you have uh, different resources and you can assign number of gatherers or workers per resource. So we're gonna assign the full resources for both wood and stone, and that tells you how many you can get per day. So we're getting 18 wood per day and 14 stone per day. So let's go back to speed one. And then, let's see, can we get this? So these also don't, uh, oh, maybe it costs some wood. But um, they do build fairly quickly. Uh, and we want to start gathering these mushrooms as soon as possible. It's quite important. Because if we don't, we are going to be in a mess of trouble. So we're going to get our three gatherers there. They're gathering 72 mushrooms per day. Um, and then we're going to have to wait a while before we build roads. Well, actually, we have some road building materials. Let's see. I don't know what the hotkey for this guy is. Um, but otherwise the, the other ones are like one, two, three, which I find very convenient. I like when the speed is on, on the number keys like that. It's very convenient. Okay. Let's see. We can do no. Oh no. Oh, we don't have any lumber. Ah, right. Okay. Let's build some, um, let's build a production building, which is a lumber mill. Uh, we kind of have to put it here for now. Uh, yeah, that'll do. It'll do. I mean, the wood's going to come kind of from everywhere eventually, so it'll be fine. 
So we are getting wood. We are getting stone. I like to build uh, almost every production building. You want to build multiple. Um, because in these buildings, you don't get to have multiple processes. You can only have one. So we're going to do this for now. Later on, we're going to discover the other thing you can do with this. It's a tech thing, uh, technology. So we'll get to it. But here's our lumber coming in right there. And the mushrooms are heating up. That's great. Now, we want to get the soup kitchen. So we we're going to need to start actually researching stuff. So that would be, I think, basic constructions. There we go. And we need 24 lumber for that. So I'm not going to build the roads right now. I'm going to wait for 24 lumber. But remember, you need to keep these mushrooms uh, um, collecting because in the winter, if we get down to winter and we have no food, then life is going to be worse. Okay, it's not going to be great. Life is going to be much worse. All right, we need to get the stock. I was hoping we could get that stockpile, but we can't. We need, what is it, 24 lumber. So we're, what we can do, though, is we can build a second lumber mill. Let's do that here, maybe. Okay, there's some lumber stuff going on. All right, basic construction. Let's start the research on that. Mm hmm I like this. They're just all trudging here with boxes and stuff. It was cool. And the buildings kind of come up stick by stick. Here we go. Stockpile, soup kitchen, and simple meals. That's just perfect. So now, so peeking ahead of time as I have, I'm going to say that um, you need many of these. You can shift click to place multiple uh, of a building type, by the way. And now I want to build, like, I want to build roads, but we can't really at this mo moment. So you don't actually have to build that many of them. Uh, not yet, anyway. Okay, burned and battered. Whoa, that looks rough. We work long hours in the scorching weather without a proper water supply. At this rate, we'll die of exhaustion if we don't lose our minds first. Does that sound like a sustain sensible way to live, Chief? If you're thinking you can go get away with abusing us like this, you're wrong. We can give you what you want. We apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, I did forget to put down the well, but of course we need a well. Now, these wells, of course, have multiple uh, water sources that you can tap. I like to build a couple because wells do actually dry up over time. So we want to just uh, build a couple and that will get the water distributed. Wells don't require any employees, so that's kind of a uh, thing you could do. Now some of these buildings, they say not connected to a road network and I think this red text is kind of deceiving because you can actually build, you can't actually get lumber without being part of the road network. Um, why? Oh, let's see. Let's get you making lumber as well. Now, here is where you can tell how many employees you have and how many free people. There's 35 people in the colony and 16 are free right now. So, come on, folks. Let's go. Make, make. Oh, wow. Production and consumption. Why are we consuming so much lumber, I wonder? What's eating all the lumber? Okay, so here's our main uh, progress there. We have our main hall. Here's our campfire. But we're going to build um, better buildings. We're actually going to build some shacks soon. Let's see if we can build those. Oath. Yeah, that'll give us shacks, but we need 22 lumber for that. Okay, group of travelers. In general, you do want to accept travelers. Okay, here's go. Here we go. Here we go. So let's make some soup. Now, choose the proper uh, recipe. There we go. And they will start making food for people. Let's see, what are we consuming in 
Why are we consuming exactly as much as we make? Not enough resources for water distribution. That's a very odd thing to say. Okay, and we can do more mushrooms here. Okay, so let's have two of these working. This one, uh, we could actually, let's just demolish it right now. We don't need to have another one because it's just going to sit idle and then it gets kind of like what they call rusted and stuff. Okay, here we go. We finally got our lumber. I, I wonder if it was just collecting. I have a feeling it was just collecting within the buildings. Um, and what it wants us to do is connect it to this uh, thing here. Uh, for now. Okay, so here, let's go this way. Alright, we're building on these roads. And these are two different buildings, so we'll just connect this, and then across, I think. I think I'm going to turn up the volume a bit, because the, um, the, uh, menu on the front page or the, the the splash page whatever you call it the main menu of the game uh, was a bit um, quiet or I'm be a bit loud and this was yeah a bit quieter okay because the music is very pleasant actually it's very pleasant all right there we go we have tons of mushrooms this is really good because now, and now we're getting simple meals. Now let's talk a little bit about how the population works. Um, there's, there are two different things. We have efficiency, which has to do with morale, and then the workforce, which you can adjust that by changing the distribution of stuff. Now, uh, meals, we really want to have meals that are at least regular because the health of our people goes down quite quickly. And we can even look at this, the health thing, so food distribution minus 15 water distribution minus 12 we have no clothing we have no housing no medication no health so we really need to get these things sorted out um and if we can we can even do a little bit extra and that can also contribute i'm not going to do that with the food yet um just because we want to be a little bit cautious in the very beginning of our colony here uh, especially before the first winter. you got to make sure that you have enough stuff to survive. I think we have more than enough, so I think we're okay. But it's good to, um, you know, just be a little bit cautious. Now then, we want to get this one. There we go. We have our lumber. So that's great. And everything is able to move along these roads again. Now, I don't know. I don't, I haven't really noticed that there's like a correlation of this, you know, you get stuff when stuff is delivered to a certain place. It does seem to be kind of magic in a way, you know, um, which is fine because it, it's, it's just the way it works and uh, it, it's not distracting or anything. So let's see. Let's get a road here. Now, there's an entertainment building called a tavern, which has to be in range of the house buildings, homes. So let's just build a few homes. Uh, and these are going to be the standard for quite some time. So you might as well build some. All right. And we're out of lumber, so we don't have uh, enough to build more roads. But we'll get some in a, in a bit here. Let's just do that. There we go. Okay. So now we are literally waiting for a new cycle in it in order to be able to research these guys. So um, the way we can check on that is looking at our main hall. And this is what we were uh, looking at before. Oh, yeah, we can also name our camp. I don't know even what we should call it. Um, hmm. Let's call it Windmine Land. <laughs> Windmine Land. And you'll see why later. Anyway, 
Uh, our first cycle is foundations, and that's what we are given at the start of the game. And then cycle two will be unlocked when we have the required knowledge to do so. We're at 825 of 875, and we have 37 of 40 people. So we need more people. Hopefully some travelers will come or people will have babies, that kind of thing. Um, the knowledge is generated by each segment of society um, by just doing the work they do. And um, they, they generate these points over time. So um, we have three different segments of society, uh, workers, craftsmen, and specialists. But right now we only have workers. That's all we got. And our health is, is nominal. That's good. That's good. We're not, uh, we're not too... We're not low, we're not going down, because if you get a bad health scare, people start dying of illnesses, and they just, just drop like flies. It's scary and sad. <laughs> it's terrible. So, anyway, we should be able to get these uh, yeah knowledge points. We're already over on knowledge points. We just need three more people, up to 40 population. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward the game and, and wait till we, we get those people. All right, I uh, I just wanted to show you the winter is coming. I at the last moment I added I forgot we had built this here, but I did add uh, the workers. They got a couple of mushrooms, but yeah, we have to have this food last the entire winter. I'm hoping we have enough. We'll see. I guess should be fine. All right, we'll have people work there too. Yeah, we did not gather enough stuff. I don't think. Let's see if we can add a, um, yeah, we can do our stockpile now. Uh, let's add this here. Let's do two. There we go. And in the meantime, we can just collect uh, the other resources that we can. We can still chop trees in the winter time and make lumber and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we have enough meals until spring. So spring is coming. It's got like two more days and right as spring begins we can start gathering mushrooms again so that's quite nice that's very nice so here's our stockpile and here's how we can adjust how many stuffs we can uh, you know uh, store and I think we're gonna increase these guys a bit um, why not and the total uh, amount of storage is down here. So uh, you're you're basically just telling the game how many of each thing you want to store, and it's going to store it. So and then you have of course the filters here that you can find stuff. A after a while, you get quite a lot of resources listed here. Okay, we didn't die. This is great. We had 27 meals left. Oh my. Yeah, we're feeding on our raw supply. That's that's where we... Yeah, we're going to need more food. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. How are we doing on food? We're produ producing 29 per day and consuming 10 per day. So we're, we're over. We're definitely making a profit on food. Okay, the annual report is ready. So each year after winter, uh, when the spring comes, you will get a report of what happened in the last year. So zero people died from disease, disaster, lack of water, or food. Two people joined us from the outside, and nine births took place. In the wake of recent events, the total population increased by two this year. Uh, renewable resources replenished by 95% based on yearly precipitation. Uh, water production was more than consumption. Uh, annual water balance plus 502. Ration balance plus 21. Two new, new developments completed. 17 new structures have been built. And then it talks about the considerable events. Those are usually like environmental things or if you have people visiting you and stuff like that. Okay, what do we got now? Unkept promises. Oh no. What's the point of increasing food shares if some of us don't even get a bite? What? Everybody's getting food. We don't have enough food to meet the ration distribution you've set for the population. Really? We do. Giving us a false hope won't benefit anyone. We're waiting on you to set things straight. I will reassess the situation. So it says set a new ration distribution level and achieve at least 90% success. Okay. Uh... 
All right, I think we can actually do this. This should be fine. I don't know if we actually need to change the ration level or not. We we can, uh, let's do extra rations for now. This should be good enough to, to get that going. Uh, we just, we need those three people in order to move on to the next cycle and get that next tier of buildings. And I found that in my test game, it took quite a while, actually. There's this kind of a strange, long waiting period, whereas uh, the other cycles kept coming, like, uh, as you would kind of expect them to come normally. Um, but that's okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why? It's weird. Um, but otherwise, these, um, these goals... They don't seem to do much. As in, it seems like there's no, um, there's no reward for getting it done. And if you say no, there doesn't seem to be any penalty for not getting it done. I mean, other than your people might die, but uh, that's just part of playing the game. So I don't really find those very rewarding, but it is kind of a hint as to, you know, you really should fix this for your people. So I'm guessing that's why that's that's why we have those kind of quests like this. So anyway, I will go ahead and pause the recording until we get those people to join our colony. I think these might be the ones. We got three foreigners coming toward our settlement. Maybe they are going to put us over the top here with the uh, proper population. We'll see. Oh, this, this section doesn't have a road. I forgot about that. Let's just add this. Uh, or maybe we go from the other side. Uh, why? Mm, why is this not letting me go there? I'm not really sure. It's kind of strange. Let's just do that. Okay, let's start here. Yes, accept. Come in. 43. Oh my god, and kids grew up, I bet, as well. Or they brought other people. I don't know how many. Maybe it was six people that came in. So we got a new cycle. That is exciting. Let's go. So cycle two. And it tells you what you have new, new access to or the possibility to access in any case because you have to research all these things before you get access to them and we get the tavern that's the entertainment building that's going to help keep our population a little bit happier the forge the smith and windmills very important all of those things um, some of the buildings do function without power but uh, they function better with power so let's go ahead and start researching stuff here um, I want to get the tavern, I think, first. That's pretty nice just to have as a as another thing. The other thing is going to be meat and fish. Really want to get that done. Let's see. Do I need anything special for these guys? These need tools. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to do... You have to do some of them in order. And I kind of wish there was a little bit maybe more... Um, guidance because it seems like there's some like a lot of clicking around like okay wh which do I need for what what huh huh because you notice this one it costs tools now we don't know how to make tools yet but I know how to make tools um so I'm like okay well we need this one first then uh and it's like yeah okay we can we can afford this one um but power grid if we wanted to do that one oh no 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 we need those iron bars so iron ingots actually uh, so this one has to be first. So I wish it, it it looks like it's not linear, but it actually is linear in many cases uh, where you have to have one before several others. So we'll just wait for that one to get done. And I'm going to try to... <laughs> I need to find the rest of my, my buildings that don't have roads to them. I did build a couple more... Um, a couple more wells because we were really short on uh, water. So now we have a lot of water. We're good on water. Okay, I think we're good then. Okay, very good. So community needs are researched good. Now we wanna get this one, cause that one has to come next. 
so let's build our tavern. So here's the tavern. You can see how it does definitely. Uh, yeah, let's build a road here, I think. Let's build a shack group. One, two, three. Why not? Okay. And then let's build another road. Excuse me, road. I kind of wish that, like that uh, interchange there with, if you choose this and then you right click, oh, it does work. No, if you choose this and then you click on this, it doesn't, it doesn't change. You have to unclick it and then click this again. Anyway, uh, it's a minor thing. Let's see, residence, let's see, tavern. Yeah, I think if we put our tavern somewhere here-ish would be nice. There we go. Oh my goodness, we have many things happening. Let's go and read all these things. Every one of us needs a proper place to live. We have food and water, but sleeping at whatever nooks we find each night doesn't help prepare us for the next day's thing. Okay, we already did. I built three shacks already. Oh my god, they want three more shacks? Lord. Okay, I think <laughs> this was hanging on from before when we started our shack building. Okay, our unstable living standards are about to consume us. Really? I thought we were okay. We should strive to keep a close eye on people's morale. Do something to improve morale within a few days. Um, okay, well, sure, whatever. Uh huh. We need... Chief, our transition to settled life will bring with it dozens of issues that need to be resolved. Rules and regulations will need to be needed to keep everything in order and running smoothly. As our leader, it will be up to you to make the final decision. We hope you can weigh the demands well and choose wisely. You can be sure that we will support you as much as we can with when you choose difficult paths. However, all the decisions you make will shape our community one step at a time. Always remember the burden you bear. Well, I know, I know. Also, I love these illustrations. They're quite pretty. Uh, I'll, I'll do everything I can. We almost have our daily lives in order. We have secure housing, food to eat, and duties to fulfill. We've come to believe that we're now entitled to some freedoms. Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> we'll continue to comply with our assigned work schedules and perform our duties. However, anyone who doesn't want to get up in the morning to go to work should be able to buy some extra rest by selling his share of food or some other supply. You should allow us to barter amongst ourselves. Surely you can give us this much. So here we actually get the results if we mouse over the, cho the choices here. Um, so we can get plus eight morale to all classes, but minus five workforce to all classes. Um, that can be good, but a lot of times you need uh, more workforce than morale for operating machines and stuff like that. So I'm going to I'm gonna say no. Let's just skip that for now. More tools. All right. Chief, since we can now process metals, you can give us the means to make tools of our own so we can see to our daily tasks. We can work without tools too, but this will be, uh, tire us physically and mentally. And the more often we have to work without tools, the more likely we'll make mistakes and cause accidents. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do it. All right, fine. So we need to produce uh, 65 basic tools. And yes, get things going. Awaiting resources. All right, we need metal for this. Um, so now we're going to... We are going to first go to our uh, collection base. Here we go. And have people collecting iron. Remember that I said these guys can collect iron? Well, they can collect iron. So there they go. So they are working hard collecting iron. Um, the white on white here makes it a little bit difficult to see stuff. But thankfully we have the spring coming along where we can definitely get stuff going. So the forge is where you melt the metal and you definitely want like two of these at least. So save a space. I'm just gonna save a space. I'm not going to actually build a second one because 
uh, unless we need more production immediately. But later you're also going to want to have like copper smelting and other stuff. And then the smith uh, goes there and that can make several different items as well. Annual report. Okay, looks fine. So this is going to get made and we're going to need to make some ingots first. In fact, we might actually, it depends on how much iron ore we're, um, are we using? No, we can, we can definitely have another forge. Okay, so let's build another forge. Let's chuck it on in here. Objective failed. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, but I don't see any way that this has like affected any of our citizens. Same thing here. We really haven't, uh, it hasn't made a difference to them at all. So, all right, we are, oh, now it's, now it's producing. Okay, so we don't actually need this one. Let's just say, yes, we'll demolish that one. And then wait, here we have our tools, yay. So there we go. And this is gonna, uh, we have no power at the moment. And I think we haven't researched the power grid yet, so let's do that. And that will get us our wind mines, and we'll be able to call ourselves Wind Mine Land, for sure. Okay, specialization. Chief, we've accumulated a massive pool of know-how, and it remains largely undirected and unrealized. We need to train individuals with more advanced knowledge and practical experience in certain fields. Those pe these people will take on specialized tasks rather than odd jobs. We'll put them in charge of buildings wherein they can put their expertise to use. As a natural consequence of this, their needs will differ from the rest of us. We should begin training craftsmen as soon as we can. We need to set some standards such as separating various fields of work and establishing the necessary qualifications. We'll start planning the training roadmap as soon as you announce the new regulations. Okay, so... Ah, uh, all right, what do we get here? Permanent effect accelerated craftsman training. Uh, I'm not sure that that's great. Let's see, Cra craftsman training and resources requirements halved. Actually, that's pretty good because it does cost tools and paper to train craftsmen. Worker to craftsman training success rate increased. Oh, that's actually good. However, 1.8 times more power tool consumption for craftsman class. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Minus nine efficiency for the craftsman class. I don't know why w I would get less efficiency, um, especially if they're better craftsmen. Increased chance of work accidents. Um, and then we have, this one gives us plus six efficiency for the craftsman class. Reduce possibility of work accidents. Minus eight workforce for the craftsman class. Should that be in red? Um, craftsman training time and resources doubled. Uh, and also the success rate decreased. Now, I had a bad time in my test game. It was like sometimes I was getting 25% graduation rate. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so we need to get a vocational training school. Uh, let's check. I think that might be in the next land. Oh, we didn't get these yet. Whoops. All right, we need the tools first. Of course we do. Yes, okay. We need the tools. Come on, folks. So let's build wind mines as soon as we get the thingy good. There we go. So let's see. The best place for these wind mines is going to be where we see there's like windy windy things yeah like here these are windy things okay and obviously the more on this meter the better so this is a really good area right over here so i'm just gonna kind of build them here i would love to see a click and drag for these things just so you could j build a whole bunch because you are going to need many and that's why i'm building many right now um, because buildings require so much power. Oh my goodness, they require so much power. So, there we go. And they don't seem to, like, cannibalize power from each other. They seem to be just, oh, fine. Okay, a scout from another land. 
All right. We are responsible for a uh, uh, representative. Uh, sorry. We are. <laughs> my God, words. Uh, we represent folks. Our expeditions led us to your settlement, and we were delighted to see such an advanced community here. We would like to barter with you and turn this acquaintance into a trade partnership. In these challenging times, every link between those who have goods to spare is a boon. What do you say? Sure. So they're going to send us a trader. We also got a new cycle. Yay! Um, we got the kale yard, which is uh, the ability to grow vegetables. Uh, basic mines. Uh, kilns, pits, scout skilled, technical boot camp, and the tailor. All right, so let's first get hunting. We really want to do that, except we need the tools for that. Can we get anything else on the next level here? These are all tools. No, I think everybody wants tools. The Oh, actually, we could get building statics. Uh-huh. Sure, let's do it. You guys want bricks your tools and paper. Um, we need to get the vocational training, but that's going to require tools. Uh, everything depends on everything here. <laughs> uh, Chief, our portions are not filling enough. Our foundations are strong enough for us to call ourselves a permanent settlement. We realize that it's too early to wish for prosperity yet, since we know everything can fall apart at any moment. However, we think that spring... Sparing one more ladle of food for the people can't break the bell. Well, you never can tell. How many mushrooms do we have? 1,100? Yeah, okay, that's fine. For all the ration shares, we demand a slight increase. Um, let's see. Why bother with such a slight change? So this is a permanent effect, and I caution you very, very strongly. Make sure you read these things, because uh, ration sizes per capita increased by 30% for each distribution level. I would rather just increase the distribution level than have a permanent increase in the distribution level. So I'm gonna say we can't afford it. Okay, foreboding things. Chief, we know there's, uh, we're in no place to make excessive demands, but there's a, this is a fundamental issue. Community health is deteriorating to the point where we may start losing many of our fellows soon. Lack of care, malnutrition, hygiene problems, and harsh seasons. Let us not have to remind you of the factors at play. Working long shifts and scorching hot weather, dehydration, and the weather affect us all the more. Likewise, working out in the cold without proper clothing is also hazardous for our community. If we force tired and under-equipped people to work such long shifts, we should expect that number of fatal accidents to increase. Ultimately, our success in all we do depends on our health and reliance as a society. Take the right steps to achieve at least regular health and try to maintain it for 30 days. I'll see what I can do. Okay, so let's look at this here. Um, our health is actually good. Uh, it's nominal here. It's not too high. Um, I mean, it's not too low at all. Uh, we are actually getting extra di distribution uh, of food for people. We could possibly go to double rations, but I don't feel like it's very necessary. So I'm going to go with that for now. Uh, I'm going to leave tool distribution at low just because we aren't making a lot right now. And I don't feel like, I mean, these are basically tools going, uh, they would, I guess they would make, make pi people's lives easier. But right now we're going to need them for research. So, anyway, we are making the tools, um, uh, and we, what are we researching again? <laughs> I completely, oh, hunting, yes, of course. That's really important. So, that means we can also build, um, more soup kitchens. It's good to have a soup kitchen per type of food. Okay. All right, so we now got uh, bricks and kilns and stuff as well. So this is done. No, is it? Oh no, we were doing building stuff. Oh, okay, whoops. Whoopsies, I think we were waiting for tools. All right, so instead we did get this. We got the kiln, the pit. Pit allows you to mine clay. Kiln makes bricks. So let's go ahead and place those down. Uh, actually, the pit is good for multiple things because it allows you also to mine stone. So really, we want to build two pits. 
Uh, let's do this and we'll move that road down one, I think. Let's do two pits. Let's um, delete the road. There we go. And then we can build our kiln over here. Group of travelers. Let's accept them into our fold. That's just fine. Okay, this is done. Yep, produce tools. Yep, we did it. Mm -hmm. Class, health class is fine. Yep. Excellent. All right, here we go. Let's let them build these guys here. This is really nice for mining stone, and it because it reduces the reliance on these side camps like this, because these stone resources, they do run out. Available is only 4,424, so they are running out. The iron is also running out, um, so hopefully we can get a mine up in here soon to get that fixed as well. Do we have, can we see the, any kind of uh, mining nodes yet? No, I don't see them. Okay, that's all right. I think we may need to research mining first. Um, okay, we did get the hunting going. That's perfect. Vocational training. That would be great if we had the tools. Um, yeah, we don't have the tools for anything, alas. So here we need paper. There we need paper and bricks. So, yeah, I guess we'll get it. But we need the tools first. So... Let's, let's get those things going on. But firstly, we do want to get any other resources that we can uh, uh, so that we're not so reliant on mushrooms for everything. So let's go here. Uh, where, wait, where, 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 where? Did our, I don't know where our mushroom, let's see, gathering camp. Uh... I lost it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So yeah, we can get um, meat. And when you get meat, you get animal skins as well. I don't know if any of the other camps that I set up are multi-use like this. That's water. Okay. This is just mushrooms. However, we can set up more gathering camps. So let's see. Do we have any fish here? There's some fish over here, okay, right at the edge here. <laughs> I'll go ahead and put that that way. Resources, gathering camp. There's some meat here, which is nice, of course, again, for the skins. Because we're going to need those skins for making, um, making the... Uh, uh, winter clothes. Winter clothes. Let's see. Gathering camp. So we have these, I think, already. Ah, uh, here's some fish. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll get these here. Uh, are, is this one... That one's only taking that camp. This one, I think, has a couple more in here. So we'll let those folks finish that up. And we may need to, I don't know if we can even put a road here, because it's a bit funky. Let's see if we can just do a curvy road. Uh, let's see, the, the curvy roads are kind of interesting. There's a whole road tutorial on this, which I suggest you might check out. Okay. There we go. Nice. Okay. We have a request for a meeting. Hi, Chief. I'm Carla. Excuse my haste. I've come a long way, and you're the only group of people I've come across. I need your help. I'm a member of a village of 20 people, and our water wells have run dry. We couldn't find a permanent solution in our vicinity. With our situation worsening day by day, fellow villagers like me have gone out to seek help. Take a breath and rest. We have no choice but to leave our home. But we neither have the strength nor the resources to build a settlement from scratch. If you'd have us, we'd like to join you. 
Though I hate to ask for more, it will be a long and arduous journey. My people, already badly battered, will need supplies and resources to complete the journey. Can you help us out? Sure. You're, you're, you're going to join our colony. That's exciting. All right. So we got that going. Where is... I kind of wish I could zoom out just a little bit more. That I kind of wish. Let's see. Let's put this back on the grid. I don't know if joining it to this road helps at all. I don't think so. But that's okay. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on and if they show road join messages and stuff like this. Okay. So we need to select what we want. We'll make this one stone. Let's put five people in here. Let's put five people in. Actually, we'll put ten people for brick mining. And you do bricks. Thank you. So this takes stone, clay, and water to make bricks. But look at the ratios. We need six clay, one stone, and one water. But make sure you do have the stone running because it's kind of important. Well, really important. And that's going to be exciting to get um, Carla back with her village. Okay, what have we got now? Chief, if we want to build a future in this nameless land and make it last, we'll need people more than anything else. Let's set an aim to increase our population to 100 people within the next four years. The sooner we achieve this, the sooner we can become self-sufficient and healthy. I'll decide when we expand. I don't want to, like, rush getting people, especially if we don't have the food to, to support them, you know? So, yeah. Anyway, now that we have other resources, um, so we're, we're out of mushrooms. We don't have enough mushrooms. We're going to change this one. You can be fish. And then, uh, okay, you can be meat. Now, we don't have the vegetables yet. Those are with the farms that we need to set up. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm kind of having a look at things and seeing that we don't have any more time, alas, for playing. But um, I hope you have enjoyed this intro. And remember, we have five more episodes at least to um, play of this game. I'm enjoying it so far. By the way, the snow is falling really slow because I'm on slow. <laughs> I wanted to take a screenshot of this area here. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to... Uh, yeah, I'm hoping you're enjoying this. It's kind of cool. There's really some interesting events that happen and, of course, exploring the world map. So I hope you will continue to watch the series. Again, uh, check out this game on Steam. There is a uh, link with my... Uh, it's like a tracking link so that the developer knows that you know you found the game through me lets them know I'm doing a good job so I would appreciate if you go to Steam through that link and it's in the description below and um, anyway check it out new cycle and um, yeah thank you so very much for joining me take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you next time